So I made a new course this week inside SAC School called Jazz Modes 101. I really wanted to do this course because, you know, I get asked about jazz modes all the time and they're really confusing. I mean, to be honest with you, they really confused me when I was first learning about improvising. I mean, jazz modes. However, I wanted to break them down in a way that was really easy to understand and that's exactly what this little mini course is. Today, I want to just show you one of the lessons from that mini course. I think you're going to like it. So in this mini course, I break down jazz modes, what they are, and also how you can use them in a really practical way. So you can actually get started using them on your saxophone, making great solos. Anyway, I think you're really gonna like this lesson. And you know, if you find it interesting, then you should check out the whole mini course inside the members area. You can get a trial, free trial at the moment for Sax School, get 30 days to check out this mini course, all the other mini courses I've got in there, and hundreds of other lessons as well. Plus it's free, so you should definitely go check it out and see if it's right for you. Anyway, enjoy this lesson. Okay, so let's talk about what a jazz mode actually is. You've probably heard about jazz modes. If you look online about improvising, you're gonna hear about jazz modes. At university level, they teach you about jazz modes when it comes to improvising. It's a standard technique for uh, improvising and, and for note choices when it comes to making up great solos. But what is a jazz mode? Well, in its simplest terms, a jazz mode is just a different form of scale. And there's different jazz modes, or these jazz scales, that we use with different types of chords. So it's as simple as that. Basically, you've got a certain type of jazz mode that works with a certain type of chord. So as you get to know all of these different jazz modes and, and which chords they relate to, when it comes to improvising, then we can make the right note choices for the specific chord that we're improvising over. Does that make sense? But if we look at it from its very, very simplest terms, working out the notes in a jazz mode is actually dead easy. And it all starts with a major scale. So let's say, for example, we start with a C major scale. So C all the way up to C. Now, to build the jazz modes in this particular key of C, all we do is we take the uh, a note of the scale and we use those notes in order up and down the scale, but we start on different notes. So for example, the first jazz mode is the mode is a jazz mode that you already know, and that's the major scale. Now in jazz mode terminology, we call that the Ionian scale, but basically it is the major scale starting on the first note of the scale all the way up to the same note an octave above. So in our example of C major, the Ionian mode starts on C, and it goes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Dead simple. You already know that one. But if you take every other note and build a scale up, you get another jazz mode. So for example, if you start on the second note of the C major scale, the D, and then you build a scale from that D up using the same notes from the scale, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, but then D again, you've got what's called the Dorian mode. So this is a mode that starts on the second degree of a major scale. Does that make sense? Now you can use that same principle to build up a mode on every single note of a major scale. And when you think about it like that, it's actually quite simple, but it does mean that there's a bunch of different modes, right? There's seven different modes. Now the good news is you, you could go out and learn all of those jazz modes, but you really don't need to. For now, and in this mini course, we're really only gonna focus on two modes, and these are the ones that you're gonna use the most often when you're improvising. So the first one is the Dorian mode, starting on the second degree of the scale that we just spoke about. And the other one is the Mixolydian mode. Fancy term, but basically it's just a mode that's built on the fifth degree of the scale. So in our example of C major, the fifth note in the scale is G. C, D, E, F, G. G is our fifth note. So if we take the C major scale that's starting on G, and we go up, in the scale order, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, back up to G, that's the Mixolydian mode, dead easy. So effectively a Mixolydian mode is a C major scale, in the key of C, is a C major scale starting on the note G. Does that make sense? Okie dokie. Now, why are these modes important and how do they work? So in the introduction I mentioned that jazz modes really are important because they relate to specific types of chords that we're going to see when we're improvising. So let's go back to our Dorian mode and have a look at that. We know the Dorian mode starts on the second degree of the scale, so in our key of C major, the Dorian mode starts on D, D being the second note in the C major scale, and it goes up the scale from D all the way back up to D again. 
Now, if we look at the notes that are in that mode, we can see that it's actually, it fits perfectly over a minor seven chord. Now, the naming note of that mode is D. And if we look at the notes of a D minor seven chord, we have these notes, D, F, A, and C. D is the one, F is the flat three, A is the five, and C is the flattened seventh or the, the dominant seventh of that chord. Now, all of those four notes, they're the four anchor notes for the D minor seven chord. They're the strongest notes that we can possibly use when making up our melodies, improvising over that chord. All four of those notes are in the Dorian mode. And that is the reason why the Dorian mode is so important to know when we're looking at a, D, at a minor seven chord. Does that make sense? So we know now that a minor seven chord is related to a Dorian mode, or the Dorian mode is the mode that we use over a minor seven chord. Does that make sense? So let's have a look at the Mixolydian mode that we spoke about. Now remember in the key of C, Mixolydian mode would start on the fifth degree of the scale, which is the G, C, D, E, F, G, and it goes from G all the way up the C major scale and back up to G, and giving us the Mixolydian mode. Now the Mixolydian mode works great over a G7 chord. So this is a major G with a dominant seventh. So the notes of a G7 chord are G, B, D, and F. So G is the one, B is the third degree of the scale, D is the five, and, and F is the dominant seventh, or the seventh degree of the scale is flattened at a half step. All of those four notes, the G, B, D, and the F, are in the G Mixolydian, and that's why the Mixolydian works so great over a five, seven, or a dominant seven, what we call a dominant seven chord in music or in jazz. So we've got two modes there, a uh, Dorian and a Mixolydian, and two very common chords that we see, a minor seven and a dominant seven. Now you might be confused about why I'm calling it a dominant seven. Uh, we don't really need to go into that now because it's got to do with the way that that chord relates to the key area. We can talk about that in another lesson. So perhaps a better way for us to think about it is just a major chord with a seventh. Okay, a minor chord with a seventh and a major chord with a seventh. So you put those two chords together, the D minor seven and the G seven, along with a C major chord, and you've got three chords that appear together all the time in jazz. And actually those two chords, the D minor seven and the G seven chord, are in fact related to the key of C major. So we've got a nice little ecosystem that's coming together, and we'll talk about that a bit more later on in this mini course. So how about we try this out again in another in another key area. Let's say we look at the key of G major. Okay, so a G major scale starts on G, and it goes all the way up to G, but we've got one sharp in G major, which is F sharp, okay? G major, do you wanna hear what it sounds like? On my alto. Okay, so of course the G major scale could also be called the Ionian mode. We know it as a major scale. If we were going to look at the Dorian mode in the key of G, do you remember how we'd find it? We'd start, that's right, we'd start on the second note of the scale, uh, which in our key of G major, the second note of the scale is A, and we would build a scale using the G major scale notes, but going from A back up to A again. So we're going A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, and A. So this is G major. <laughs> We're going to build a Dorian mode. So uh, in the key of G, we're going to start on the note A, which is the second note of the scale, and go straight up the G major scale from A to A. So straight away, it's got that minor sound to it. And remember that A Dorian uh, mode works over the A minor seven. It's an A Dorian, because it starts on an A, and it works over an A minor seven chord. Does that make sense? So the notes of an A minor seven chord are A, C, which is the flat three, E, which is the five, and G natural. And all four of those notes fit in the A Dorian. 
Okay, perfect match. So what about the mixolydian? So the key of G, we would start the mixolydian on the fifth note, right? Okay, so we're in the key of G. So the fifth note is G, A, B, C, D. The fifth note is D. So if we take the G major scale, but start on D and go all the way up to D, we've got the mixolydian mode. Here's the G major. If we start on D, Okay, it's got a much brighter sound to it. Now it's a D mixolydian, so that's going to work over a D7 chord. See how it works? Now the notes of a D7 chord are D, which is the 1, F sharp, which is the 3, A, which is the 5, and C, which is the 7. And all four of those notes are in the D mixolydian. So the D mixolydian is a perfect choice when improvising over a D7 chord. Do you see how that works out? And like I mentioned before, the A minor 7 and the D7 all fit in a nice little family group with the key of G major, which is the starting scale that we worked our modes from. Does that make sense? Okay, so just a quick recap then. So modes are built on the di different um, notes of a major scale. We find the Dorian mode by starting a scale, a major scale on the second degree of the scale, and it works with a minor seven chord. We find the Mixolydian mode by starting on the fifth degree of a major scale, and it works with a, a major with a seventh, so a seventh chord. Oh, hey, I hope you found that useful and thanks for sticking around if you're still here at the end of the video. There's some really good stuff in there, but in the rest of the mini course, I really go into a lot more detail about jazz modes and we do loads of jamming and most importantly though, I think I give you lots of practical ways that you can use jazz modes to actually use them in your soloing and it's not complicated. But remember, if you want to check out that full course, go get a 30 day trial to Sax School. You can try out the whole mini course, kick the tires, plus also all the other mini courses and the hundreds of other lessons inside sax school. There's tons of stuff that's really gonna help you with saxophone and that's really what I'm about is to try and make saxophone learning fun for you so you can make some great progress. Keep practicing hard, I'll catch you next time. Go check it out, go check out the trial. It's free, 30 days.